Hey, it's James Murray. We're in the Net News Ledger newsroom, and we're here with Mayor Hobbs, who's had an interesting week this week. First of all, you were wheeling around the city. Yeah, um, yesterday myself and Councillor Chung uh, got into a wheelchair and uh, tried to traverse around a uh, bit of the city, around City Hall, and uh, I have to tell you, James, it was tough. It was really tough. There's a lot of areas in the city where, you know, probably bumpy sidewalks or you know, uneven curbs sometimes, or just trying to get up a curb is probably a real challenge for someone who's facing a challenge already. Yeah, you know, we talk about accessibility, and uh, Dave Shannon, you know, is well known and well respected, said that Thunder Bay is well ahead of the curve on, on accessibility and, and getting it the city uh, accessible. But even City Hall that we call accessible, I tried to get in the front door, and one of the wheels got caught on the carpet, and I couldn't, I had to be pushed. Um, there's bumpy areas uh, at City Hall. When I went down the uh, ramp, I can understand now why people in wheelchairs wear gloves because uh, I got friction burn from just trying to stop the chair on the on the down slope. So, and then coming up was a good workout for the arms. Mm -hmm. So, you know what we consider um, people that aren't uh, have, don't have disabilities consider accessible, uh, not necessarily true. It's it's something we got to keep working on. Definitely. I mean, we're making great strides, but we have a lot of work to do for sure. Waterfront's back in the news. Yeah, well, What's exciting in the waterfront that people need to know about? Well, I think uh, the plan, the master plan that came to City Council last night uh, for approval, and we did approval. It's a, and people have to understand it's a 15 to 20 year plan, so it's not something we're going to do overnight. Um, it's a work in progress, and as the funding uh, becomes available, and we're definitely going to need funding from other levels of government, i.e. the province and the feds, uh, like we did with uh, phase one of the project. But it's very exciting, and um, I'm on that waterfront development committee, But I, and I said uh, we have to focus a little less on the boats and more on what, you know, getting people, because I don't know how many boat owners there are in Thunder Bay, but um, I'm a firm believer that we have to make that accessible to the um, 100,000 people that don't own, don't own boats in the city. Mm -hmm. And you know the marina is a big part of any waterfront uh, granted, so we're going to look at that piece, but I want to make sure that we have all the other pieces so that um, people that aren't as well off as the boat owners can enjoy uh, the spaces down there as well. It's a special place and it seems, um, you know, you get the movies in the park and the concerts in the summer, it fills up. Oh, it's amazing. You know, I, I go down there as often as I can, even just for a drive through or walk through and uh, the vibrancy and the, and the life that is brought, uh, not just to the waterfront area itself, but to the downtown core as well. And we're going to expand on that, the art gallery, that's, uh, we've gone out and, and done our surveys and um, the public want the art gallery down there and, and tourism, I mean our numbers are up, albeit the American dollars mm -hmm. is helping us right now, but um, we're seeing those tourism numbers go up and a lot of people that I uh, talk to, I, I see license plates from out of the, the country and out of the province and um, people love it. So one of the areas, you know, you talked about that, the, the downtown north side is, is Quite a contrast to say the downtown south side. So what what can we be doing? And there's a lot of construction in the Fort William neighborhood mm -hmm. uh, around the area, Simpson Street, May Street. It's all coming yeah. together to be probably Thunder Bay's smoothest roads. Well, what else can be done? That was part of it, James. And you know we've got our enhanced infrastructure renewal plan. Now we're putting uh, millions more uh, every year into roads, and I want to keep that up. Um, you know we get complained about the, the traffic jams and stuff, reconstruction, and I've heard lots, but uh, I'd rather have those traffic jams because we're fixing the infrastructure. And I think if you have good roads, good sidewalks, good, it leads to good neighborhoods. And we're working on revitalizing the downtown core. I know that Mr. Habib was at council yesterday. Uh, we're all at arms. He's uh, got a deal um, going with that, and it's going to be exciting. Um, homelessness issue. You're going to be meeting with us uh, tomorrow, I believe, at City Hall to talk about that issue. And um, we're going to—that's my number one priority as mayor mm -hmm. for the next three years—is uh, attacking this homelessness issue. It's a—it's a huge issue, and it's—it's it's probably in a lot of ways for a lot of people in Thunder Bay, it runs under the radar screen because it, there are, you know, shelter houses doing the best it can, other areas are doing the best they can, and there's people who are falling between the cracks. And so getting that dealt with is huge. 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, people came to me last week about the refugees and, and bringing refugees to Thunder Bay. And um, we have our own refugees living right within the city and coming to us from other communities that, um, you know, have nothing in their communities. So we have to look at that first. And, and that's my part is looking after Thunder Bay first. So we're going to put a big focus on it. Um, we've gone to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Uh, we've gone to every minister that we uh, saw this trip to Amo in August uh, to, in, in uh, Niagara Falls was focused on homelessness and the housing issue, um, even if it was a Minister of Culture and mm -hmm. Recreation. Every minister we pitched that to so that we can get all the ministers on the same page. And, and I'm hearing that uh, other municipalities did that as well, so it's good to see. It's, it's a focus that Thunder Bay needs. Um, yeah, definitely. We now, need shifting gears on you a little bit, and and one of the one of the videos that's making the rounds in Thunder Bay is one of our previous mayors, Mayor Walter Asset, <laughs> and um, a very strong position at City Council. Could you picture if you ever tried that at Council, what would happen? Well, in today's uh, uh, times, I'd be arrested first of all, <laughs> put in jail for assault or, or threatening bodily harm. I, um, so we can't behave like that anymore. That was different days, and uh, you know, I met uh, as a bargaining chair for Thunder Bay Police. I met with uh, Mayor Asif, and uh, I admired his uh, spunk and, and his outspokenness and how direct he was. Uh, you know, I try and be outspoken when I have to be, um, but he was a little over the top, I think. Well, it, it was it was interesting because my first experience in Thunder Bay as a kid at 16 was waking up to. Uh, the Rick Smith Morning News, mm -hmm. where he interviewed the mayor about the top issue, and the, the mayor wanted a pony for every child in the city because it would teach them responsibility and it would be green for the environment and everything else. And his second topic was putting two one liter pop bottles in your toilet tank. I guess he was an environmentalist ahead of the thing, but you know, when you watch some of the what went on at city council, it's a lot calmer now. Oh, uh, you know. Uh I, I believe it was uh, Councillor Chung said we're like the United Nations compared to a lot of those <laughs> council meetings and I laugh every time I watch those videos. Um, I think we've been a very functional council, last term of council, and, and this we have a lot of respect for each other and even if we disagree, um, you know, there may be some disrespect but there's, it's not uh, visible. Um, you know, I, I, I think that we're a pretty good lot. So We're coming up closing in on a year since the new council was elected if you were the the teacher as mayor you're kind of in charge of the council if you were grading council giving them from an a to an f where would you do well i gotta say um right now and this isn't derogatory against council or myself but a c right now because we're into our strategic planning so um, we haven't got everything together on that we have a lot of uh, issues coming at us. I mean, I'm still pushing for the event center. I'm going to be putting a resolution for it next week. And um, there's that, there's the homelessness piece. So there's a lot of plans uh, that we're formulating and we haven't got there yet. So you can't give somebody or an A or a B until um, you bring those plans to fruition. So uh, the first year, I mean, we have a couple new people on it. We're getting to budget time now. Uh, I know growth uh, has been really good, mm -hmm. so we're going to see growth uh, in this year and hopefully that can offset the uh, tax increase a bit, but I still want to uh, maintain our capital improvements. Mm -hmm. uh, the infrastructure is so important, it was let go for so long, So, but I'm going to give Council an A on infrastructure improvements for the last four years, definitely an A or an A+. plus. So in closing? When does Costco open in Thunder Bay? I gotta ask you. Okay, well, I gotta tell you that we have done everything we can do as a city. It's now between the developer and Costco, and I'm hoping for a report uh, early October. So I'm still on it. I'm pushing, and I'm not giving up. I've told Tim Camisso he's leaving at the end of October that I want this uh, at least announced before he leaves. So. I can't fire him if he doesn't, but... Uh, Maybe you just tell him he can't leave. Yeah, yeah. That might and, be the worst thing. another uh, issue we're facing right now. We're, we're looking at a new city manager. Now how wide vital. are you casting the net? We're casting it far and wide, nationally, internationally. Um, it's the most important position in the city, um, more and more so than even a mayor, because uh, he's the one that gets into the nuts and bolts, gets into the departments, and uh, is in charge of the managers. Um, 
politicians don't delve right into the day-to-day -day operations uh, very much. I mean, we set guidance and mm -hmm. we set direction for the organization, but he's the actual guy that runs the ship. So. Well, something I've been finding over the last year on council is if they find an issue in the city that needs to be addressed, uh, the city is responding very quickly. Yeah, I have to agree with you, James. Like when I get complaints, I give them to Tim Camisso and I copy the uh, appropriate uh, department manager. And I'll tell you that they get to them very quickly. Um, so I'm very pleased with that uh, part as well. So administration in that regard would get an A for me as well. So looking now toward the last quarter of the year, what's going on? What's Council's biggest goals? Budget. Um, bringing in a decent budget. We're starting uh, pre-budget consultations and um, you know it, it's always a challenge when you're balancing uh, increased infrastructure spending like a capital we've mm -hmm. really really ramped up in the last four years so now we have to uh, balance the budget and uh, it's, it's a huge challenge. We have issues still with the flood. We're still in a state of emergency from 2012. We're still working on the uh, water uh, pollution control plant. And those are challenges. Um, funding, we're dealing with insurance companies. We have a big lawsuit over that. There's never any shortages of issues. Um, so, and, and it's putting out fires a lot of times. So, Mayor Hobbs, it's always good to have, have you come in, well, talk with the media, share, share with the readers and the viewers. Great. Thank oh, you. it's great to be here. Thanks, James.